a happy new year to you all. We're really sorry that we can't see your faces. Welcome to you wherever you connect from, whatever your life is like right now. Welcome to a time to brighten and fill your soul with the light and hope of Christ. Welcome to a moment of sheltering out from darkness in the bright love of Christ who was born as one among us to save us, to lead us to life. Whether alone or in your group, isolated or connected, on another continent or in a neighbouring home, together we worship God who is love. Now let's worship God with lyrics from Psalm 148. Glory to God above. This time of online worship comes from our household, us, that is Katrina and Mark, assisted by Andreas and Douglas, and remotely also Rory in Germany. And we need your help. Can you phone someone and wish them a Happy New Year? Phone especially someone you have not spoken with for a long time. Now this service we've recorded with the resources of our household, but we would like to include you. So over the coming weeks, can you record yourself reading a bit from the Bible or singing a piece of music encouraging the faith during this dark time? And can you send such a recording to us to include in one of the next online times of worship? Please think about it. Two verses from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, where Zechariah first spoke. 
Our God is merciful and tender. God will cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us and to shine from heaven on all those who live in the dark shadow of death, to guide our steps into the path of peace. Now let my words guide you in prayer. Let's pray. We thank you, God, for our living. Just as yesterday and all days, we have lived by your grace. God, you are our host on this planet, and it is you who gives us food and light through people around us. We pray because we live here and now with burdens and with joy. In our past are dark and difficult things, unsolved and maybe unsolvable, problems with ourselves, with others and society, dangers and shadows of our time, we are hurting. We need your grace and mercy, God. Our lives are a mixture of both good and bad. There's not only pain, but also things to thank for. Not only worry, but also hope and joy. God, help us to see the light and beauty from people and through people, coming from you, God. Thank you, there is relief on the way and healing to hope for. Jesus, you are the true light of the world. We ask you, by your grace and mercy, make bright our entire being so we'll recognize your love, so we'll stick with you in dark times as you dawn on our lives and on the life of the world. Guide us towards the path of peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oh Mark, I've lost the church keys. I don't know where they are. I've been searching so around here. Where have you lost half them? I came through down there. Um, I've maybe dropped them somewhere, but so I can't see them. Why don't you look over there where most likely you have dropped them? Because I can't see there, it's dark. Whereas here it's nice and bright, so I can look here. Oh well, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, a cave lived under the ground, as caves normally do. The cave had spent all its life deep in darkness. One day, it heard a voice calling to it. Come up into the light. Come and see the sunshine. But the cave said back, What is light? What a sunshine! I have no idea what you're talking about. As far as I am concerned, there's only darkness. Finally, the cave was persuaded to try something new, to adventure out. Cave was amazed to see light everywhere and not a speck of darkness anywhere. Cave felt a kind of warm and happy it had never known before. But then, why should the cave be the only one to try something new? Was it not the sun's turn to adventure into a new place too? And so, looking up at, to the sun, the cave said, Come with me and see the darkness. The sun asked, What is darkness? The cave replied, Come and see. One day the sun accepted the invitation, and as it entered the cave it said, Now show me your darkness. But there was no darkness. You should take the light to the dark place and find your keys where you've lost them. Okay, uh, George. There they are!
Arise, Jerusalem, and shine like the sun. The glory of the Lord is shining on you. Other nations will be covered by darkness, but on you the light of the Lord will shine. The brightness of his presence will be with you. Nations will be drawn to your light, and kings to the dawning of your new day. How wonderful it is to see a messenger coming across the mountains, bringing good news, the news of peace. He announces victory and says to Zion, your God is king. Those who guard the city are shouting, shouting together for joy. They can see with their own eyes the return of the Lord to Zion. Break into shouts of joy, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord will rescue his city and comfort his people. The Lord will use his holy power. He will save his people. And all the world will see it. Where could I go to escape from you? Where could I get away from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I lay down in the world of the dead, you would be there. If I flew beyond the east, or lived in the farthest place in the west, you would be there to lead me. You would be there to help me. I could ask the darkness to hide me, or the light around me to turn into night. But even the darkness is not dark for you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel told them. A week later, when the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name which the angel had given him before he had been conceived. Oh, 
can say that again. It's dark at this time of year. <laughs> These last days have been fantastically bright though, for a few short hours. That's funny for you to say. I remember 26 years ago, I think it must be, we were getting married the next summer and you came to Scotland for a month from the 7th of December to the 4th of January. The four darkest weeks of the year. They were. And the days weren't nearly as bright as they are this year. I thought you'd probably never come back again. But the summer we moved here, you had to come and tell me it was almost 11 at night because I was still working with power tools outside in the garden and I had not realised that it was so late. It has its compensations. You know, we should be having a sunrise service. Now, in the middle of winter. But sunrise services are usually at Easter. Yes, but if we had a winter sunrise service, it could be 8.45 instead of sometimes 5.45 at Easter time. It would certainly make getting up much easier. But maybe by Easter, we'll be able to meet in person again, (sighs) which we can't do just now. Do you remember? The Easter sunrise service that we had outside Mm -hmm. when the sun came up and as I was saying the blessing, the faces of all the people were pink and glowing with the reflected light. They really were. It would be good if we walked about like that all the time. Not pink, I mean, but our faces reflecting the light of Christ shining in the darkness. A lot of people are glad to be rid of 2020 because it's been so dark. But I suppose there has been good things in it as well. Do you think 2021 will be brighter? It's hard to tell. In some things, I'm sure. 2020 was a year of contrasts. So much fear and uncertainty and darkness. And then all the positives underneath it as people supported one another and reassessed their values. And nature had a chance to recover a little. In the Christmas story, there are contrasts too. The backdrop to the Christmas story is 
the Roman Empire. And Caesar Augustus is busy saving the world with his armies and power. And yet today we would see the one born in the stable as the saviour of the world. Born into poverty and weakness, yet in the end his is the power and the glory. Lots of contrasts. In our readings today too, light and darkness, the dawning of a new day. And yet the dawn doesn't just happen as a sharp contrast from darkness to light. There's a lot of twilight and shades of grey tinged with pink when things are hard to make out what they are. It's not sudden, it's gradual. Especially in Scotland. <laughs> but do you know the story of the question a rabbi asked his students about the dawn? Well, tell us. A rabbi asked his students, when it is at dawn that you can tell that the night has ended and the day begun? How do you know that the dawn has dawned? Is it when you can tell a sheep from a wolf? Asked one student. No, said the rabbi. Another ventured an answer. Is it when you can tell an olive tree from a fig tree? No, said the rabbi. Reluctant to guess more along these lines, the students urged the rabbi to tell them. You know the dawn has come, said the rabbi, when you can look at the face of every man and every woman and see the face of your brother and sister. Only then have you seen the light. All else is still darkness. But isn't that the opposite of contrast? Because that's seeing everyone the same. And seeing them in the light of God. The dawning of the light in our darkness enables us to see, to see each other as God sees us. So maybe I wasn't so wrong to be looking for my keys in the light. But you didn't find them in the light. You found them when you took the light to the darkness. I remember once having a conversation with someone who objected to a line in a hymn about darkness finding a friend in Christ. Which hymn is that? It's a paraphrase of the beginning of John's Gospel, where it talks about the light shining in the darkness. We didn't read that today, but it's also straight out of Psalm 139, which we did read, where it says that darkness and light are the same to God. I suppose that's like the key. Darkness holds no fear for God. And in the Christmas story, the angels appear in the darkness saying, don't be afraid. We don't know much about what angels look like, but we do know that they're bright and shining. But the cave story, what mm -hmm. you said before about darkness and light being the same to God, and all the rest from Psalm 139. God went into the cave. What do you mean? At death, at crucifixion, and then his burial laid in the tomb. And then he came back from it, like the sun in full strength. God filled the cave with light. You're absolutely right. So we look for God's light wherever we can find it? I suppose so. But there's more. That sunrise service picture, can we see it again? Um, yes. God is light and we reflect the light of God. It's God who lights us up. We don't have to find our own lights. And then with God, we go into the dark places. Like 2021? Who knows? We're certainly still in the dark times with the virus, even if light is coming. And Brexit is bringing so much uncertainty 
as it now finally happened. And many people are exhausted, especially those involved in caring. The darkness can seem overwhelming at times, but the light of God is always there. The darkness can't put it out. And we absorb it as on these sunny days. And then we can't help but reflect God's light. Think of Mary and Joseph. They had amazing experiences that first Christmas. But God came to them and filled them with light. But then they took the time to reflect on it and think deeply about it. Yeah, that came into the reading. And we're just beyond the day, eight days after his birth, that also came in when Jesus was circumcised and formally given the name Jesus. I wonder what Mary and Joseph thought about that day. And then all of a sudden, they get sent elsewhere, out into the darkness and the flight to Egypt as refugees, and they have to take the light of the world with them, literally, Jesus. So we don't need the stable scene anymore, do we? Shall we take it away? It's done its job. Yeah. Maybe it's time to put it away till next Christmas. Okay, good. So what shall we put here now? Um, shall we get the cross? I don't think so. Maybe soon, but it's still a while till Easter. Are we going to um, have a dawn service this year? At 5.45? I don't know whether people here will be up for that. Let's not worry about that too much now. This year, Easter sunrise isn't till 6.30 anyway. Ages. But more important than that is that Jesus lived. That's what we're remembering now. And there are 33 years between Christmas and Easter. We can't forget that. But where's the focus? Um, doesn't it help people to have a sign or a symbol, something to focus on? Like all these people behind us? They're followers of Jesus, every single one of them. But there is also another story I like. What is that? <laughs> it's of a church, supposedly in Strasbourg, and at the end of the war. And the church was in ruins, but they discovered, in among them, the precious statue of Jesus they had had, in among the rubble, and the statue was intact or almost. The hands that were stretched out in blessing were broken off. The hands weren't there. An offer came to the congregation to repair the statue and the congregation unanimously decided to refuse the offer because the statue of Christ without hands reminded them that Christ has no hands but our hands. We must be the hands of Christ. Carrying the light into the dark places. Yeah, but there's more to it. Because in Strasbourg, nobody knows that story. It doesn't seem that it's real. That's a pity. But there's also such a story from San Diego in California, where the statue outside the church was vandalised. And another such story from South Africa. And yet another in a church in England and France and Germany Lots of different stories, all saying the same thing. Well, the hands of Christ are needed everywhere. And people of faith, and most especially Christians, are so badly needed in the world and in our country and in our village or city. We need to stand up and be counted as Christians, consciously to live as Christians, to be known as Christians to be obvious as Christians, reflecting the light of God and shining in the darkness. So today, we'll end with singing the blessing to each other, mm -hmm. the one we often use at baptisms. It has the face of God, countenance is the word that's often used there, face of God shining on us. I love that. When God's face shines on us, then we are blessed. 
We are there for each other. We can do things together and support each other. When we're blessed by God and receive God's light, only then can we shine for others. God gives us the blessing each of us needs and the strength to carry on. Through the darkness of the cave to the rejoicing of the light. Let's end with a reading from the book of Numbers. It's the original of the blessing we'll use at the end. Chapter 6 from verse 22. The Lord says this to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are gone home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. Lord God Emmanuel, Christ, our Saviour, we pray. We pray for our world in all its need and at the beginning of a new year. We pray for peace and not war. We pray for peace and not tensions. We pray for peace and not disease. And because we pray for peace, we must pray for love, which cares for and values people to transform the world and love to transform ourselves and bring hope. And because we pray for love and for peace, we must pray for justice, to right wrongs and respect one another and the whole of creation, to make this world a better place for all to live, that your people might live in peace. Teach us also to live and act justly and in humility. Be present, God, in our world, in our country, in our village, our neighbourhood, our city. Be present with those who fear this new year. Be present with those who look forward to this new year. We pray for those about whom we care. And we offer this year and all that it holds for us, known and unknown, to you. Lord, lead us each step of the way, filling the world with your light, and may we not be afraid, but shine to your glory. Amen. As stars adorn the night-veiled sky.
as we go into the new year and out into the world, we sing this blessing to one another. God said to Moses, If they pronounce my name as a blessing upon the people, I will bless them. Let's sing it to each other. The Lord bless you and keep you. If you're with someone, just now sing it to them. And if you're on your own, think of those that you want to sing it to. And maybe pick up the phone afterwards and tell them you sang the blessing to them. The Lord bless you and keep you all now and always. Thanks, babe.